all the books. It, it, it's time for book reviews. Hello everyone and welcome to Fortmaster's vlog for the Warhammer 5000 gaming system created by Games Workshop based in the UK. And welcome to book review 148 of this vlog. In this video we will review the short stories called The Dread Sentinels of Dorne, written by Rob Sanders, and The Tithe, written by Ben Counter. We can begin with The Dread Sentinels story. This was a part of the 2014 advent calendar and it was released in close proximity to the codex sub supplement called The Sentinels of Terra. And by adding the word dread to the title and changing the last word, I think this has one of the ugliest titles ever. Remove that word dread and it works perfectly fine. With the word dread, the title becomes dread, if you get my point. We can begin to talk about the front cover for this one. It's the same front cover as for the Sentinels of Dorn, and longtime fans of my channel knows that I don't like reused images. Prepare for a lot of that when it comes to the Imperial Fist. The original image looks really good with the battle-hardened Imperial Fist. I will give this one however an 8 out of 10 forks. Let's see what this story is all about. Investigating the silence from a distant star fort, the Imperial Fist are attacked by the monstrous Tyranids. With their ship in danger, the Space Marines enact a dangerous boarding action into the heart of the Xenos bioship, seeking to rip out the heart from the aliens and save the world below. So our main character is Captain Caractur Contrador of the Imperial Fist 5th Company, who is about to board the old star fort the Dread Sentinel. So that's where the title is coming from. It looks like someone has taken quite a huge chunk out of the ship and eaten it so the team of the Imperial Fist are sent in to investigate. None were finally alive on board though. It all came crashing down when the Eternid Hive bioship comes out of nowhere and completely obliterates the Star Fort. Captaining only a small frigate, there's very little he can do against that thing with his firepower. There's little they have time to do before the Hive ship swallows them whole and the survivors must fight through the bioship interior. Many of the Imperial Fist are killed in brutal ways as the Liberian leads them to a sensitive area. There they find the data logger from the Dread Sentinel which was supposed to survive the void destruction of even the decimation of a planetary crash, so it was no, no big surprise that it was still intact here. They do however manage to kill the nerve that connects the ship to the hive mind making their losses somewhat acceptable. The apothecary of the team suggests that they could have collected the gene seed of their fallen brothers but it is polluted and their armor is beyond any more usage. But now the Liberian can contact one of the other Starforge named Maximum Fane, named after the Imperial Fist Captain of the 22nd Company during the Heresy, later on the Chapter Master of the Fist Exemplar, and also the Imperial Fist who rebuilt them when they were completely destroyed. That is a connection to the Beast Arises series. It ends with them soon to be picked up by another fleet and that they gathered information which might be suggest that the Tyranids are on their way towards the Inwith Cluster. So, what did I think about this short story? Well, uh, upon reading this I found a discrepancy between the board games where the Space Marines are favored in one single way and then you read stories like this that where they get completely obliterated by the Xenos I think it was a fun, interesting short story about the pair fist involuntarily boarding a hive ship. It was a fast pace and I would lie if I said I had full sight on who was who in this story before they died. I would say it was much that made this a special as it was an Imperial Fist story, but it was okay. I would give it a 6 out of 10 forks. So, we can end this with the short story, The Tithe. On the front cover we see a very boring front cover of an Imperial Fist. I will give it 1 out of 10 forks. Let's see what this story is all about. As Brother Skoivan's life takes him from another battle brother to revered ancient interred in a mighty dreadnought, an event from his past returns to haunt his present. So this takes place during the scoring as the Imperial Fist fights against the world Iron Warriors on an unnamed planet. During the fighting, Brother Skoivan kills a traitor, but he himself is mortally wounded from a knife cut where poison penetrated into his bloodstream that not even a space marine could fight off. As he awakens in his delirium, he begins to talk about Rogal Dorn, who is long gone by this point. 
He is 300 years old and one of the few that still remains from a time when Rogal Dorn was still alive. There is a huge choice of whether to put him in a dreadnought sarcophagus or not, as the tech marine attended to him knows that Skyven would rather fight on as before, but he is dying and it would be wasteful to let him die when his wisdom could live on for another few centuries, if not even longer. He agrees to put him in it. As he's put in the dreadnought, he's made a mistake of bringing a small bone fragment from a dead iron warrior with him. As he awakens, the iron warrior is implied to have taken over it and it is his revenge. So it's a short story. Uh, like the premise of one of the last living fists that ran with Rogal Dorn having a really depressing ending. I would say it's, it's one of Ben Counter's better works, but short stories can fool one as you don't have enough room to screw up if you, if you get what I mean. I would not recommend it that you get it for the length that it has, as it's a really, really short story and at the cost of that word count. But the actual plot will get it up to a 6 out of 10 forks. So if you can buy it as a part of the collection, go for that, but don't buy it separately. But with that said, I will conclude this book review. Thank you much for watching this book review. See you around everybody. Bye bye.